Hello, you wonderful people. Welcome back. This is the second lesson in our Shappy crash course. In our previous lesson, we took a look how to set up a Shappy application. So you have this basic admin. We also added our first collection type and we took a look at how to get our collection via our endpoint to get our data. In this video, we're going to continue. And the way I wanna structure this course is basically do things as if you're building a real project. And as I explore new features that we're using, we'll jump more into the details. So to preface this project, you may be watching this course on this other project that I'm working, which is an LMS built with Remix. And what I wanna show you is how you could use your Strapi instance, because believe it or not, I'm managing this website on Strapi. I love Strapi and this is why I'm showing you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to build out this navigation so we could get this data dynamically and send it to our front end. So instead of hard coding our navigation in your website, you will be able to change your navigation inside your website. After we build our navigation, we'll start building out our landing page, which is gonna have our hero section, our heading and our feature section. We're also going to build out this footer. And again, we're talking from the standpoint of Strapi, of how to manage our data. I am creating additional courses. For instance, we have our Astro course or our Next.js course, which will show you exact implementation from the front end, how to implement Strapi. But today we're going to continue talking about how to structure your data. And before we continue, I'm going to log in in an actual project that I already have deployed and live to show you what I mean. So if we go to our feather here, you're going to see that I have a couple of different items. Each collection here represents certain data. For instance, I have artists, links, pages, which represents my website pages. For instance, I have my blog page, and here you could see the content for the blog page. We'll talk more about this as we continue, so bear with me. We have our post collection types, but what we also have, we have the single type. And the difference between collection types and single types, collection types, if you have many pages, many products, many posts, you would use a collection type. If you have a single type, for instance, I want to have my global settings where I wanna have my top navigation and my footer and my basic meta information, we could create a single type. And this is exactly what we're gonna start with today. If you take a look at this global single type, this basically, for now, represents the data for our top navigation. And this has the website name and it has the navigation items that are represented here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create this collection type to store our website data. And we're going to start by representing this top navigation and the footer. So without any ado, let's jump right into it. One thing to note about Strapi or headless CMS, it is not like WordPress where you have a page builder and your content is tightly coupled with your representation layer. What do I mean by this? If you take a look here, I have my coding after 30 website. I have my CMS corner, and I have this other website that I'm working on. They all have slightly different visual representations. So the idea of a headless CMS is make your data or your content management flexible enough that you could serve your data to multiple channels. It doesn't even have to be a website. It could be a mobile device. It could be an app on your smart refrigerator. And so the idea of what we want to do, instead of think about how we visually represent the data, we want to think about how we structure our content. And one example here, looking at these websites, we're going to take a look at this top navigation. Notice we have our logo, we have our nav items, and we have our call to action. If we go to our other website, we have the same idea. We have our logo text, we have our navigation, and we have our call to action button. If we go to another site, we have our logo, we have our nav items, and we have our call to action. And so the idea, we want to create a flexible structure to hold the data for our navigation so we could literally use one Strapi instance that can power multiple front ends if you chose. So the reason why I wanted to show this example is because I want you to know that the flexibility of a headless CMS is that it allows you to deliver your content to multi channels. And what I like about this, your data is not coupled to your front end. And we'll continue to talk more about this as we continue along, but I just want to really clear up this difference between what is a headless CMS, which is basically decoupling your content structure from your 
presentation layer versus CMS like WordPress, where your content is tightly coupled to your visual presentation of your website. So we're going to use the Coding After 30 website as an example. And we're going to start by creating a representation for our top navigation. One thing to consider, although we have our top navigation, the website logo is the link, right? If you click it, it should take you home. Then we have these additional links to all courses, to our blog page, which are also links. We also have our call to action, sign up, which is a link. And then you notice that we also have links in our hero section. And so what we're going to take a look at is how in Strapi you could create a reusable component such as a link that you could reuse in multiple places. So we first gonna start by creating our link component. Then we're going to create our top navigation. And then we're going to create a page to store our general data for our website, which can include our top navigation data, our initial meta information, and our footer. I already have my Strapi application running. If you missed the first lesson, make sure you check it out because this is where we set up our Strapi application to bring us to this point. So now we're going to go ahead and navigate to our content type builder, and we're going to create a new component. And this component is going to be responsible representing our different links. So taking a look at our website, we know that in multiple places, we're going to have multiple links. For instance, our website name is a link. Our top navigation has links. We also have a link button. And then our hero section also has two links. And notice that we have primary color and secondary color. So let's create our strappy link component where we could store the data required to show different variations of these links. We're gonna start by clicking create new component and we are going to call it link. And let's create a category called elements to store all of our different elements that our website may have. Click create and click continue. So what data should our link have? Well, number one, it should have a label. For instance, the name of the link or where to go. We could call it text, title, or label. I'm going to go with label, and we're gonna keep it short text. Let's click add another field, and we're going to again select the text field, and this is going to be our path to the link or the URL. We're going to call it href. Next, let's click add another field. Taking a look at the link, we might have internal links that navigate us to our website, but maybe our sign up link or call to action link takes us to an external website. So let's add a Boolean and we're gonna call it is external to represent links that lead away from our website. We're gonna to go to advanced settings and we're going to set it as false. Back to basic settings, this looks good. Let's add another field. If we take a look at our links, we have our regular links, we have our primary button, we have our secondary styling. So let's add a way for us to differentiate from what type of link are we using. So that way we could style it accordingly in our front end. So we're going to use enumeration and we're going to say type. And here we're just going to add some values to represent the different styles of links. Let's say link for a regular link. And then we're going to say primary and secondary, and let's click finish. So here we have our basic link component has a label, our href or the path URL to where we want to redirect. Is it external or internal? And the type represented by the enum. Let's click save. Now that we have our link component, let's create a new single type to store the data for our top navigation, our footer, or any other data that we want for our main layout to have. And this is gonna be responsible for storing our data for our top navigation, our footer, and maybe some of our basic meta information. So let's call this global settings, and let's click continue. And here, we're going to start with a text field. We're just going to give it a title. Then we're going to, we're going to keep it short text. Then we're gonna add another field. Let's click text. Let's do long text and we'll say description and the title and description fields you could use for metadata or you could just use it externally to kind of tell the user what this uh, global settings page is all about. Now let's click add another field. Now taking a look at our website, we wanna recreate this top navigation. So let's create our top navigation component. We could actually click on this component button here and we're going to call this top navigation and let's create a new category called layout and click configure the component to keep moving forward. 
So if you're wondering why do we have to add the name a second time, so here we're going to have a general top navigation component, but if you want to reference it in other places, like our global settings page, we want to give a name or an attribute that we're going to use to refer to that component. So I'm just going to call it top navigation, and it's going to be single component. And let's click add your first field to the component. So our first field is going to be our title and link here. And so I'm going to click add component. We're going to use an existing component. Let's select our link component that we created earlier. And this is going to be called logo title. It is going to be a single component. Now let's go ahead and add another field. Our next field is going to be the representation for the content for our top navigation. We might have multiple links. So here we're going to again click on component. We're going to use an existing component. Let's click select component and that's going to be our link component again. And we're going to call this nav items. And it's gonna be a repeatable component because we could have multiple nav items. And finally, let's click add another field. It's going to be a component and this is going to represent this button here or our call to action. So we're going to use existing component. Again, click select component. We will use our link and we're going to call this CTA or our call to action. And it's going to be a single component. So now when we click finish, you could see our global setting page. It has our title, it has our description, and now it has content to store our top navigation data. We have our logo title, we have our nav items, and we have our call to action. So let's click save. Once everything is saved, we could go to our content manager and inside a global setting, you're going to see we're now able to add our title. I'm going to call this main layout settings. And for description, I'm going to say this is where we will store our, our top nav and footer data. And now we could add our top navigation. Let's click the plus button and we're going to add our logo title. The label is going to be our website name. So we take a look here. We're going to call it coding after 30. Coding after, after 30. For href, it's going to be the root of our project. Is it external? False. This is fine. And we're just going to say it's going to be a link. Now let's go ahead and add our nav items. We have all courses and blog. So I'm going to, under nav items, I'm going to click the plus button and I'm going to create the first one, which is going to be all courses. And it's going to go to all courses. Is it external? No. And type, it's going to be a link. And let's add another entry, which is going to be our blog link. It's going to go to slash blog. And is it external? No. Type, we're going to call it a link. We have two of our links here. And then finally, let's add our call to action. And it is called sign up. So we're going to call sign up. And it's going to go to sign up page. And is it external? False. And type, we're going to say primary. And now when we click publish, this is going to go ahead and publish our global settings page, which is responsible for our top navigation. We have our logo text, we have our nav items, and we have our call to action. Nice. So now if you wanted to get this data from an API, you could easily do that. So let's finish this video by taking a look how we could query this data using Postman. So first step, we're going to settings. We want to go to users permission, plugin and roles. And under public, because we want this to be publicly accessible, we'll see our global settings. Go click and open. And we're just going to say we want to find our items. And here you could see that we have the endpoint that we want to hit to which we make a get request to get our data to our website. I'm going to go ahead and copy this because we're going to use it in just a moment and click save. In my code editor, I have a cool extension called Postman that allows me to create queries. So we're going to click create a new HTTP request and we're going to reference our local project at HTTP local host 1337 and we will add our endpoint which is at our API global settings. I'm going to go ahead and save this and call it get 
global settings page so I know what this is and I'm gonna add it to my strappy collection here and click save. So now when I click send, you're gonna notice that it queries my data. And one thing you will notice here is that, wait a second, I see the title and the description. If we go back in our Strapi app under our content manager, yes, you're getting the title and the description, but where's my top navigation? I don't see it at all. And the reason why this is uh, default behavior in Strapi is that we don't want to overfetch or underfetch data. So by default, top level fields, like we have the title and the description, but components, any relations, you need to tell Strapi specifically that you wanna fetch it, which makes it similar to GraphQL. So this way we could only request the data that we need. If you're new to Strapi, populate and filtering may seem a little bit confusing when you're starting out, but I promise once you understand how it works, this will all make sense to you. But to help us out, let's go ahead and see how we could populate these items. If in Google you search Strapi Query Builder, it's gonna bring you to this interactive query builder page. This shows you an example of how you could reuse object notation to write your query that will return this query string that you could use in your post request. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to delete sort. I'm gonna delete all this other stuff. And for now, we're gonna keep it simple. With, we're gonna delete everything else. So we want to populate all of our items in our top navigation. So taking a look in our SHAP application, we basically want to say, hey, let's target top navigation and let's populate all of these items. So here I'm going to say top navigation and to populate all of its initial children, we're just going to say populate star. And we'll learn more about this in more detail as we continue, but for now, go ahead, copy this query string and let's test it out in our API response and make sure that we are pointing to our global settings and click send. Now you could see that we're getting not only our title and description, but we're getting our top navigation. We have our logo title. We have all of our nav items and we have our call to action. Nice, we did it. We took a look how to represent our top navigation data in our Strapi application. Not only did we learn about our components, for instance, we created this link component to represent our link items in our website, which we could repeat. We also took a look how we could add additional flexibility by passing additional settings like this type to allow us to tell on our front end if we want this to have a regular link style, primary or secondary, which is really cool. Then we took a look how to create a top navigation component and to make it flexible, we have our logo title, our nav items and our CTA all are using our link component that we created, which is awesome because this makes our content types very modular. Then we created our global settings page to represent all that data. Then we gave our endpoint permission under public to be able to, for our global settings, to allow us to find our data. We got our endpoint to which we made a get request to get all of the items. And we started to learn about Strapi's populate and filtering that allows you to prevent overfetching and underfetching. And to help us with that, we checked out Strapi's query builder that allows us to write object notation to get our query string. And again, if this seems a little bit confusing, we will cover this in much more greater detail as we continue with this course. Nice, we're making some great progress. And in the next video, we're going to take a look how we could represent the data for this landing page by constructing this hero section. Then we'll continue by creating this heading section. And then we will take a look how we could represent our features in our application. And then we'll learn about dynamic zones that allow us to dynamically structure this content in a strappy endpoint, which will also reflect in our front end application. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.